Hey everybody, I'm coming to you from the Blue HQ. It's the working title at the moment of our underwater lab. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about rebreathers. So this is part two in uh, our series of Scuba 101 videos about rebreathers. So if you haven't seen the first one, which is basically what is a rebreather, there's the link. You should watch that first and then come back and then you'll be an expert. Um, so now we're going to talk about why rebreathers are useful because everybody thinks, oh, if you dive, you know, when you get to a certain level, you're going to use a rebreather. And the answer is not that simple because a rebreather isn't always the right tool for the job. A rebreather has some really good advantages. So let's talk about them. There's three major advantages to a rebreather. One is of course the obvious. It doesn't make bubbles. Two, um, it extends your gas supply by quite a bit. And three, it can allow you to have dives with less decompression. Um, so, or longer dives with no decompression. So let's talk about those three. So the first thing, no bubbles. Obviously, if you're breathing in and out of a counter lung and you're recycling your breath, you're not releasing bubbles into the water. And that is very useful because there are a lot of animals that are sensitive to bubbles. Maybe they uh, are scared of bubbles. Uh, maybe the bubbles uh, are too loud. Maybe they don't like the look of the bubbles. Um, so there are great advantages with not having bubbles. Now, as my friend Howard Hall likes to say, now Howard has probably more hours on rebreathers than pretty much anybody on planet Earth. Um, and he certainly has the most hours on a rebreather of anybody that does natural history filming. He's been using rebreathers since basically the 1980s when the only ones you could get were from the military. And he has pointed out on many occasions that rebreathers are not these magical devices that let you sneak up on animals. Animals can still see you. You are still very visible even when you're wearing a rebreather. It is not a cloak of invisibility. It just makes you quieter. So there are some animals like big schools of scalloped hammerheads that are very sensitive to scuba bubbles. And if you hide behind a rock and don't move around too much, they'll come a lot closer because the bubbles won't give you away, floating up above you and making a bunch of noise. And they're okay if you just stay down, hidden behind a rock with your camera poking out. So there's a lot of animals that will be easier to film if you don't make bubbles. And of course, many of you, if you've watched the first season of Blue World, uh, you know that I, I dove a rebreather from about 1999 till about 2007, so about eight years. And what I found out was that even though the rebreather does help you with a lot of animals, it doesn't really help you all the time. And so you have to trade that off with how much of a pain it is to travel with a rebreather. And it's gotten a lot easier to travel with rebreathers because a lot more places now support rebreathers and they have sorbs so you don't have to bring it with you. Uh, and they have oxygen so you don't have to figure out how you're gonna get oxygen or really high percentage nitrox if you're using a semi-closed rebreather. So there are more places that support rebreathers so it's easier. But I actually stopped using a rebreather for a long time because they were just such a pain to travel with. And they didn't always buy me anything. And one of the things that you will find is that if you're on a rebreather, but nobody else on the boat is on a rebreather, you may not get a lot of those advantages of not having a bub not having bubbles if like everybody around you is making bubbles. So that's one thing to consider. Okay. <clears throat> Second thing that rebreathers give you that's an advantage over open circuit scuba gear is much better gas efficiency, which is to say, if you're recycling your breath, you can go a lot longer on the amount of gas that you can carry. So for example, on my rebreather, I have a two liter oxygen bottle. It's a, it's a scuba tank that's about this big, mounted right across my butt. And that little scuba tank has enough oxygen in it to last me six to eight hours, six to eight hours to carry that much open circuit gas. 
a typical scuba tank will last you maybe an hour. So I would need six or eight scuba tanks to be able to stay down that long. So that is a major, major advantage in terms of efficiency. So I can do much longer dives, um, which for example, if you're cave diving and you have to obey this rule of thirds, um, you can use a third of your gas to go into the cave, you can use a third of your gas to come out of the cave, and you save the last third for emergencies or for a buddy that has a problem. That limits how far you can go in a cave before you have to turn around. And if you can carry now six times as much effective gas, then that changes the dynamics of how far into a cave you can go. Now, of course, I'm opening a can of worms here because when we talk about cave diving, we're also talking about if something goes wrong with the rebreather, you have to be able to get out on the bailout that you carry. So the bailout is another factor that goes into that. But just in a broad scale with a rebreather, you can stay down longer. So that's cool. Finally, the third thing about rebreathers that makes them a little bit um, better than open circuit. Um, when you dive open circuit, you're carrying a scuba tank that has a certain blend of gas in it. It might be air. A lot of the time it's just air, compressed air. Sometimes it's nitrox. So if you don't know what nitrox is, we did a video about that. You should go check it out. And what happens with nitrox is you increase the amount of oxygen that's in your breathing gas. And it's not because we need more oxygen. It's because if you increase the oxygen, you can decrease the nitrogen. And by decreasing the nitrogen, you can stay longer before you have to decompress. So therefore you can have a slightly longer dive without having a decompression obligation. Or if you do have a decompression obligation, it would be a smaller decompression obligation. The beauty of a rebreather is you're basically wearing a little gas blender on your back, which means that you can have the exact perfect mix for whichever depth you're at. When you're carrying a scuba tank, it's always a compromise. You have to think before the dive what would be the best blend of gas, and you may or may not be able to get that at your dive shop. So you'll get the kind of the closest thing that they have and then that's what you're stuck with for the whole dive. If you, if you dive 32% nitrox, you got 32% oxygen for the whole dive. There's nothing you can do about it. But with a rebreather, you're looking at the oxygen PO2 on your computer and you can basically blend your own nitrox to whatever is the best blend for the depth you're at. And it can change with your depth. So if you go down deeper, you can change it. If you're up shallower, you can change it. And so you're always breathing at any depth you're at, you're always breathing the perfect blend for that depth. And what that means, less decompression. So that's a perfect combination with the other advantage of the rebreather, which is that you carry enough gas that you can have longer dives. Because obviously we want to have longer dives, but we don't want to get bent. So you can have a longer dive and not get bent. So this is why rebreathers are cool. So just to review, fewer bubbles. Oh, I should mention, rebreathers do still make some bubbles because whenever you ascend and you go shallower, the gas that's in the breathing loop, which is your lungs, the hoses, and the counter lung, that whole big bubble that you're breathing from, well, that gas expands as you ascend and the pressure goes down and you have to burp it out of the rebreather. And so you will see a rebreather diver, whenever they're going up, they burp out bubbles. And then when they go down, they're putting more gas into the rebreather to expand the counter lung because as they go deeper, of course, it gets compressed. So Rebreathers do make some bubbles. They're not completely bubble free, but in the normal course of breathing, if you're just swimming along at the same depth or you're just hanging out on the bottom waiting for those hammerhead sharks, you're breathing with no bubbles. So advantage of rebreathers one more time, very few bubbles, much better gas efficiency so you can get longer dives and the last thing, of course, you're always breathing the best possible blend for the depth you're at, so you have less decompression. So those are the three main advantages. Now let's talk about disadvantages. You gotta travel with a rebreather. You gotta go to places that have either those tiny little oxygen bottles to put on your rebreather, or you gotta bring it with you. And it's very 
difficult to fly with scuba tanks. First of all, the bailout tanks are bigger, but you can usually get those locally. But your little oxygen bottle, you can fly with it, but you have to take the valve out, which means you have to let all the oxygen out, you have to take the valve out, and very often you're gonna get called to security because they're gonna see that thing on the x-ray and they're gonna look at it and they're not gonna go, what's that? And they're gonna make you come down and look in there and then prove to them that the valve is out and that it's all cool. So it can be a problem. And back in the day, when you couldn't get sorb locally anywhere, and still today you have this problem, you have to bring your own sorb. And I have had my sorb confiscated in like three cities, notably Singapore and Hong Kong. Um, I had a tub of sorb packed in my gear. They x-ray it. They take it out. They go, what's this tub of chemicals? It says it's chemicals on the side. I always have the data sheet on the side that says it's not flammable. It's not harmful. It's okay to fly with, but they don't care. They just see a tub of chemicals. They don't know what that is. They don't want to let it on the plane. I will tell you that I got around it once by telling people it was kitty litter and putting it in a kitty litter container and carrying it as kitty litter. So I would not advise that, but let's just say it has been done. There's a couple other things about rebreathers that are more work than open circuit. There's maintenance. So you're gonna spend a lot more time every day dealing with a rebreather, cleaning it, prepping it. Um, so there's a lot more work involved, which takes away from the time you have for other things like working on cameras and things like that. And then of course, there is the problem that rebreathers are more complex and so more things can go wrong and so you have to be a lot more careful uh, than you do with open circuit not to say that open circuit you shouldn't be careful but open circuit scuba gear is very reliable and simple rebreathers are more complicated and need more attention so sometimes a rebreather might not be for everybody because it just requires more brain power to run it. And maybe you need that brain power to run your camera or something like that. So rebreathers can be a pain to travel with. They can be a pain to get gas for and to get sorb. And so there are a lot of cases where I won't use, won't want to use a rebreather just because it's too much work. Um, if I'm just going down to the Caribbean, I'm going to go to Belize and I'm going to film some fish on a reef. I'm gonna be the only guy on the boat with a rebreather. There's really no advantage. It's a lot of work for no good reason. But if you wanna do some penetration into caves and, or wrecks, and, or maybe you wanna go a little deeper, or maybe you wanna stay down a little longer, or maybe you're filming an animal that's highly sensitive to bubbles, then the rebreather might be a good choice. And you say, okay, well, it's worth going through all this trouble in order to have that tool. So a rebreather is a scuba diving tool among many and sometimes it's the right thing for the job and sometimes it, it might not be. And so that is part two of our rebreather, not really a class, sort of just a 101. And um, next time we're going to talk about some other stuff like a little bit more specific stuff about the different kinds of rebreathers and how they work. So stay tuned. And until then, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoy our cool new set, Blue HQ. <laughs> and talk to you next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode.